In this video, we're going to be looking at an object falling in the presence of air resistance. And in particular, we're going to be looking at the situation where the force of air resistance is linear. Um, the force of air resistance is going to linearly depend on the velocity v. And this is going to be something where we'll be able to find the velocity as a function of time using simple first order separable differential equations. Before we solve the differential equation part, I'm going to go through and look at the situation and come up with the equation for the acceleration of the object. I'm going to show that the acceleration is given by g minus bv. So again, the situation is we have an object of mass m released from rest. So the initial velocity is zero. It falls through the air, which exerts a Const, or it exerts a resistive force equal to minus mbv, where m is a constant, it's the mass, b is a constant, v is the speed of the object. So the fact that it's negative means that the force vector is opposite the velocity vector. So if we have this object falling, the two forces that are acting on it are the weight of the object, mg, and the force of air resistance, which is upwards, which is m times b times v. And with this, we're going to set it up so that down is the positive y direction. So the net force acting on this ball is mg minus the force of air resistance, m, b, v. And the net force is mass times acceleration. And so combining those two things together, m, a equals m, g minus m times b, v. If I divide both sides by m, the m cancels out and we get that A equals G minus B V. So again, this is just using Newton's second law, looking at the net force on the object and relating that net force to its acceleration. Now we're going to take this and we're going to try and find the velocity as a function of time. So we're going to start with the equation for the acceleration that we had. We have g minus b v. If we're asked to write a differential equation that we could use to solve for the velocity as a function of time, we would need to have a differential equation that has v and derivatives of v. So the important thing that we need to know is that acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So th this equation for acceleration that I have could be written, rewritten as dv dt equals g minus bv. This is the differential equation used to solve for v. Often you'll only be asked to write the differential equation but not solve it, and so this would be the answer. If you are asked to solve it, then we're going to be going through using separation of variables. And so to do this, we need to get this in something that has v's and dv's on one side of the equal sign that we'll be able to integrate, and it has our t's and dt's on the other side of the equal sign. To do this, we actually have to recognize that we need to divide by the whole quantity that's on the right-hand side. Um, we can't just subtract over you know, or add over a b, v, because it doesn't mean anything to try and do the integral of b, v, 
plus dv. That is not something that you're able to do. So we need to have it as something that we're going to be able to integrate. So we're going to write this as dv divided by the quantity g minus bv. We're going to set that equal to dt. And so then the next thing to do is going to be to integrate both sides. The right hand side, that integral is going to be very simple. I'll look at that one later. The one on the left hand side is a little bit more complicated, but not too much. We're going to go through and we're going to use a substitution. We're going to use a u substitution. If I let u equal the quantity g minus bv, then we have that du is minus b times dv. or dv is du over negative b, just negative du over b. And so with the substitution, we have, we replace the dv and the g minus bv we replace with u. So this right, this left hand side becomes the integral of negative du over b. So the b is a constant so I can bring it out front. And then the denominator, g minus bv, just becomes u. So we turned it from something that looks fairly complicated into a simple integration of du over u. This right-hand side is just going to be the integral of dt. And so the integral of du over u is the natural log of u. So this is minus 1 over b times the natural log of u equals t. And then this is an indefinite integral, so I need to add a constant to one side of the equal sign. But again, u was g minus bv, so we can substitute that back in. We have negative 1 over b times the natural log of g minus bv equaled t plus a constant. To simplify this a little bit more, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative b. Again, whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I do to the other side of the equal sign. So this gives me the natural log of g minus bv equals negative b times t plus a new constant c2. And this new constant c2 is just negative b times c. But b is a constant, c is a constant, so rather than try and keep all those terms, I can just replace it by this new constant c2. The next step is to get rid of the natural log. So we have to use the exponential function e. e is the inverse of the natural log. So if we exponentiate both sides, we have e to the natural log of g minus bv equals 
e to the negative b t plus the constant c2. So this gives g minus b v equals, this right hand side can be rewritten as two exponentials. We have e to the negative b t times e to the c2. e to the c2 is still just a constant, so I'm going to replace that with a. So I get that g minus b v equals a e to the negative b times t. So again, we're trying to solve for v. And so I have to add negative g to both sides. And then I have to divide both sides by negative b. So that gives me that v is, again, I'm going to incorporate the negative sign. I'm going to bring that up into the numerator. So this is going to be g minus a e to the negative b t, that whole thing over positive b. So again, I multiplied the numerator and the denominator by negative 1. So that made the g go from negative to positive, and that made the a e to the negative bt go from positive to negative. So again, this would be the general solution to this differential equation. But for our particular situation, to find the particular solution, which means to find that value of a that satisfies the initial conditions we're given, we're told that it starts from rest. So v is 0 at t equals 0. So the velocity at t equals 0, which is 0, is g minus a e to the negative b times 0 over b. Again, e to the 0 is just 1. So this tells me that if I want this to be 0, that numerator has to be 0, which means that a must equal g. And so if I substitute that in, I get that the velocity as a function of time is g minus g e to the negative b t divided by b. This would be the solution. This gives me the velocity as a function of time. It's more common to factor out a g so I could rewrite this as v as a function of time equals g over b times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative b t. There's no difference in those two equations. It's just doing a little bit of algebra and doing a little bit of factoring. But this type of differential equation is this type of solution is a common one um, where you have these quantities 1 minus e to a negative exponent, 1 minus e to the negative t, 1 minus e to the negative x. And what this would look like if I were to graph velocity as a function of time, when t equals 0, 
the velocity is zero. If I look at this, as t approaches infinity, e to the negative infinity approaches zero. So that's one over e to the infinity, which is zero. So this means that the velocity approaches g over b. If you were to graph this out, you would see that this would be what the graph of velocity as a function of time would look like. Again, that special case, the velocity at really, really big times, would be the terminal velocity. Again, that happens when the upward force of air resistance, mbv, equals the downward force of gravity and it stops accelerating and so this gives us that V the terminal velocity is G over B that is the constant value that it approaches as T becomes very big in this example of the air resistance being linear with V, this is something that you're able to do in easy, simple first order differential equation. To, you know, you're able to solve that to get velocity as a function of time. It does not work as easily when you have that the force of air resistance is proportional to the velocity squared. Um, but again, sometimes you may be asked to find the equation for velocity as a function of time based on solving the given differential equation.